What was the Civil War all about? Was it money? Cotton? <laughs> controlling the economics of the South? Uh, it was slavery. British, British Virginia trade? Depends on how you ask the question. Mm. Why was the Civil War fought? Is a very different question from what caused the Civil War. Mm. What caused the Civil War? Slavery, the expansion of slavery, and the contention between free states and slave states, which had resulted in bleeding Kansas, widespread fighting that had uh, been happening predominantly in the Kansas territory, but also in other parts of the country, and uh, ultimately led to an election where Abraham Lincoln what, didn't receive a single vote in seven, I believe, seven states, or actually, I don't think he received a single vote in any of the states that eventually went on to secede, so wow. I think it was 11. But uh, why did they fight? The South fought because they were invaded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shelby, Shelby the Foote's war. my favorite Civil War writer, and uh, he said that the North thought they were fighting the Civil War, and the South thought they were fighting the Second like American Revolution. They called What's the, the best book? Yeah. What, which book? Oh, gee, well, just I think it's called the Civil War. It's a okay. whole series that I think he spent maybe twenty years writing. Mm. Uh, some he wrote fiction about the Civil War and also nonfiction. And you should look up his interviews. He's I, no longer with us, but an amazing writer. I know they call it the War of Northern Aggression. Right. A lot of people in the South right. refer to it as well, the it's war like to, of in the Northern Putin interview. Aggression. He said that in Russia they refer to World War II as a great patriotic war. Um, I think, okay, it feels a little bit different. Like, I don't want people in the South being taught that it's a war of Northern aggression because well, that's not. Well, what Shelby Foote meant was that there were people in the South who might have not had slaves and they just saw like marauders in their homes burning things down, like, uh, with the total war from Sherman. Yeah, but they, they were fighting for the right they for were people fighting to, to live. But they were fighting to survive, uh, Sherman doing, you know, total war. But that's not saying everyone in the, in the South, but there were definitely people like I spent a year in Georgia where uh, Sherman kind of went through and sometimes it wasn't Sherman. It was people pretending to be with Sherman to go maraud and take over farmland. And those I, people I, started fighting to I'd save like themselves. To, there's a lot of people in the chat who are saying it was a state's rights versus federal issue. I strongly recommend uh, you guys like read some academic papers and read the letters from many of the generals. I, I had a, a great time, went to uh, uh, Jackson's, I think I went to two of his houses. Mm. And one of, the, one of them was crazy. They had a musket in the kitchen. This is what I love about Second Amendment. They have a musket in the kitchen for shooting critters. So like anyone could just grab it off the wall, open the back door and then wait for a rabbit or something or a beaver or who knows and just right. bang, a gopher. And then you throw it in the stew and That's you're right. just like, it came in my backyard, it is mine. Mm. And the gun was just there. But uh, yeah, we went to uh, their houses. I read, I read their letters, learned about their wives. And uh, certainly it is a very complicated issue with many different views. But uh, while the general view most people would give you is it was fought over slavery, it absolutely was not fought over slavery. It was caused by the issue of slavery, which like bleeding Kansas existed before there was a question of states rights. People were murdering each other in, in the Kansas territory. John Brown was blasting people in the face. You, uh, mm -hmm. Hans Christian Hegg wasn't even an American and he came here to try, as, an, as an abolitionist. Slavery uh, uh, was was dissolving in other parts of the uh, of the world as, a, as an institution. And so it could not be an issue of states rights when bleeding Kansas was happening seven years up to the le was leading up to the Civil War. Some argue bleeding Kansas actually is the Civil War. And we just view the Civil War as like because it was when this when the government actually became actively involved. But bleeding Kansas gnarly seven years of, of bloody conflict and bloodshed abolitionists and pro-slavery forces were fighting in various territories over whether or not they would be slave states or free states. The slaveholding states believed that with Abraham Lincoln's election, he would not only stop the expansion of slavery, he would get rid of it. And I believe Lincoln's position was, no, no, you can, you can keep it. We just won't have it in any new territories. So they were just like, nah, we're not going anywhere near anybody who opposes this. There were four candidates running. One guy, I love this. He was just like, I'm not going to talk about slavery at all. And so nobody cared for him. One guy was like, more slavery. One guy was like, uh, completely get rid of slavery. Abraham Lincoln was supposedly like the compromise ca uh, candidate where he was saying, you can keep it, but no more. As soon as he got elected, seven states said, this is it. We're going to secede. Before he even got inaugurated, the session started. And that's, so what, en what ends up in the fighting over the Civil War is the North invaded the South. Yeah, this is, I, and I don't want to be an apologist for war and I don't want to, but I just want to give nuance to both sides of that war. And I'm talking about Georgia in particular with the Confederates. There were, these were people who, whose fathers were invaded by Britain and their houses were burnt down, not necessarily slaveholders. Uh, and then they saw it as a second, like American revolution, because then they were invaded by the, they saw the North as a, as an invasion. But then, you know, there's people on the, on the North in, in Sherman's army during the March of the sea who, you know, 
weren't also angels. They were killing freed slaves uh, who were following them just because they didn't want to be followed anymore. So that's not and, to say and, every person who fought in the Confederacy owned slaves or... 5% of the U.S. population. Yeah, but they were fighting on behalf of a government who was fighting for the ability for you to still have them. I would yes. still say not which all. Is, and and, and in their know, constitution. Not all, yeah. But, so what, but yeah. how they interpreted it. Yeah. So although... They're defending the right to, you know, so not slave owners directly, but still defending that. However, right. and I'm sure they were propagandized in different ways. Yeah, to no, believe different things. Yeah, no, uh, uh, almost no. And 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 I read this in in uh, I I watched this in several documentaries, but I read this in a couple different academic papers. The idea is, it's reasonable to assess that no Confederate soldier fought for the right to own slaves, as none of them did. It was only a very small portion of wealthy plantation and factory owners who did. The soldiers were not mobilized under the view that slavery must be defended. They were mobilized under the view that Union soldiers were rampaging through their state and threatening their families. If it were the issue that the Union did not invade, not a, it is likely that they would not have been able to have mobilized a military, military force to fight the Union because the, the, the average young man at the time was not going to go to war to defend some rich guy's slaves. Yeah. Well, the South, if the South doesn't secede, then the North doesn't invade. And we wouldn't let any part of the country in, secede right now. You right. Know, you but, know, but. So, this is my point. The, the, the fighting of the war was over for the North, the secession of the South and whether they had the right to do it. So fair point to those saying it was states' rights to secede versus mm -hmm. the federal, versus the Union. But that is why the North was fighting. You have no right to secede. You, Ulysses S. Grant said, you have a right to try. But if you lose, we, we own you, basically. And um, it's a brilliant assessment of the issue pertaining to the revolution and how we won and the civil war and how they lost. He basically was, was, he was basically saying the Americans, the colonists at the time, this is 80 years prior. So not even that long for them. It's kind of wild, right? He's like, they decided they shouldn't be ruled by the crown. They fought. They won. Congratulations. The Confederates feel like they shouldn't be a part of the union anymore. They fought. They lost. We own it. That's, that's who you're being ruled by now. But so uh, I think it's important to break down this distinction because when everyone says, what was the cause of the Civil War? I think slavery is an absolutely fair assessment. Like this led to the great contention in politics. Why was the Civil War fought is an entirely different question. The Union demanded the right to the states. The Southern states said no. And why? Uh, and, and that's actually, I would say, why was there? Why did the Civil War begin is states rights versus uh, 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 the federal issue? And why was the war fought? And that is an invasion from the North, like plain, plain and simple. Uh, if, if the Union forces decided to let the South secede, there's no war. None. Secession is not war. So what started this? What started the war? The Northern invasion. Like, I mean, there you go. They decided like you do not have a right to secede. So, Mr. Ottman, it sort of begs the question, uh, did you bring this Union Jack flag to this former Confederate That is not state? a Union Jack. All right. Um, <laughs> the Union the Jack Union, is the British flag. What, it, what was the... Just the Union flag? The Yankee, Yankee flag. The Yankee flag. This is the Yankee flag. Huh? Yeah, did you bring this Yank flag to this former Confederate state just to mog on them a bit? <laughs> I think West Virginia was the first state to leave the Confederacy. I could be wrong. You can well, look it, it up. So they were, it was taken. I believe that West Virginia is like statehood done dirty, man. That's right. Did you also know, Tidbit, uh, West Virginia's original proposed name was Kanawha. Oh, that's cool. Sounds yeah, like kind a Native of, American kind of a river, word. I believe it is. Just like Illinois or um, Ohio, you know, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those words. Uh, I be I believe like uh, most of the Midwestern states are right. Yeah. What Dakotas. do you mean uh, done dirty? What do you mean? West Virginia was formed through a vote. Should we break away from Virginia and stay with the Union? It's really easy to win a loyalist vote when the young men are forced to go off and fight a war for Virginia oh, to man. defend the state. And once all of the men had left to fight in the war, those that remained voted to fracture off the state from Virginia and join the Union. Jeez. And when the young men returned after the war and were like, this is Virginia, the Supreme Court ruled, no, it's not. Virginia, uh, it's, it's actually um, a big Supreme Court uh, case that happened just after the Civil War. Virginia argued that the war is over. Virginia must be retained as whole. And they said, nope. So it's pretty wild to think. Virginia would have been huge. It was huge. It I was mean, massive. West Virginia's huge and Virginia huge on I'm on glad it own, happened. But, oh, me too. I mean, it's done dirty, but West Virginia's based and Virginia is not so it. based. I love it here. We need more states. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, need the more, more the merrier. I, I, it, it is fascinating to be here. Like, guys, if you come out here, you will you walk 10 feet and there's like a placard 
with a picture talking about the Civil War and what happened. Mm -hmm. We drive up the road like 10 miles and Antietam is right here. And the cannons are, are there memorialized mm -hmm. and there's like a bunch of different plaques explaining what happened. Yep. Man, Dude, it's crazy. I, I Gettysburg's know, 40 minutes away. I know a local mm. grave digger and he's always just what? like, yeah, I go to church with him. And he's like, I found more Civil War bones. You know, he's always finding from, from the uh, I got, battlefield surgery. We got a Civil War bayonet. Oh, nice. And yeah. Shane, you're convinced on the ghosts. On the ghosts? Well, I think uh, landscapes can be haunted by mass trauma. Yeah. Yeah, they call that yeah. phantom DNA. Yeah, it's in there. <laughs> the it's photons there. bind to DNA and then when the DNA is removed, the photons stay there for a while. I don't know about the photons, but think of all the blood spilt on this on this land. I mean, in all these towns near where we're at, they were all turned into hospitals to saw limbs off men, right? There's churches where like, yeah, the wood here is still stained from blood, Yo. you know? And what book wild? can we read about that? Oh, that's Inverted World Volume 2. Thank isn't, you. It, isn't it wild that like, if they just knew to pour whiskey on some guys, like if they take, take the bullet out, pour water on it, and then pour whiskey into it, yep. you might be okay. Yeah. Like, Here's imagine. some leeches and some whiskey. Just Dude, but they would it. drink the whiskey while yeah. getting the amputation. But like, yep. bro, just clean it. They, oh. didn't, they didn't know. It's wild. Was wash it? your hands was what, like 1907 or something? Yeah. Yeah. People didn't wash their... And it's like, I love the story of when they were like discovering germs and the doctor's like, perhaps you should wash... It was because women were dying in childbirth or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he was like, maybe if we wash our hands before... Like, That's crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then they did. And then like women started dying less. I'm, I was watching... I, it might be the Kings and Generals YouTube channel. There's a few channels where they do like historical battle document. Nice. And one of them, it's Civil War. Like I, don't, I think it was... No, no, it's like um, uh, like a map, and it'll show like the oh. generals' faces as the troops move around on the map, and they'll tell you like from the south, Stonewall Jackson came in and split his troops off, General this guy and this guy, but Sherman or whoever, and it it became very real. Like things started to seem like they were my friends, and I was picturing them outside so running funny. through these hills, yep. and it's like it, just with bayonets. That's and something I, I walked away from that inverted world book that I wrote when I was in Georgia is like even those battles are so contested amongst historians. I saw two men almost get into a fist fight in a historic uh, like museum because they were disagreeing on whether or not uh, Confederates, or no, I'm sorry, uh, loyalists, this is the revolution, were on horses or not. And they got so mad and they couldn't even agree on that. And you look if, at all these documents, they don't even- Dude, Gettys now. Gettysburg is awesome. Oh, it's I crazy. really recommend anybody ever get a chance because they got awesome food. They've got chocolate shops. They got souvenirs everywhere. You can buy cannonballs. There's so much like Civil War refuse still everywhere to be mm. found. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nuts. And then we, when we drove up there, because it's like seriously 40 minutes away, yeah. there's like just reenactors everywhere. Like you, every road you're driving down, there's like guys in 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 like costume. That's kind of weird. I don't understand why you'd want to do that, but I love the history. It's so, huge. You know. I, I mean, I grew up in West Point. I grew up around reenactors. It was Dude, just part I, of life. We went to... Um, it's, it's really crazy. I can't remember where we were. I think, were you with us when we went to that aquarium? Yeah. And we, we watched the uh, the, the yes. story of the ironclad? Yes. That was awesome. Yeah. North Carolina or something? Yeah. Yeah. That's and crazy. and I, don't, I don't remember exactly where it was, but they were talking. Yeah, I think it was North Carolina. Yeah. The ironclad and its invention was like insane. The Confederates were going house to house and, and, and confiscating farm tools to make iron for ironclads. Yeah. Because these ironclads were like basically indestructible steamships that could go up up river and down river and could deflect cannon fire so and gnarly. there's a crazy story where uh and, and the people listening might know the story better than me uh, we were watching this this video that was like you know show and there was like sounds and you can see the lights it was like it was an aquarium and uh they talked about it i guess it's like an artificial reef or something but anyway yep. this union guy as their their ship is approaching the ironclad and they're fighting it's having no effect he just like instructs them to keep firing and then runs up Someone didn't do it. And then he like pulls the cord or whatever to fire the cannon. And someone yells, no, the cannonball hits the ironclad, bounces in the air, lands back on the ship, blowing him up, killing Whoa. him. Yeah, dude, the ironclads. It was amazing, Crazy. dude. War is nuts. Dude, uh, the union was, uh, they call them Sherman neckties. You guys know about those? They were they, to stop the flow of, you know, food and, and ammo. Uh, on the railroads, they would burn the, the train tracks and then wrap them off the ground and around trees. Those were called Sherman neckties. Whoa, like they would take the, they would rip them the metal? After heating them up so much so they could then move them. Wow. But you can, there's, I so think the there's trains would just go off and crash. Yeah, they, they couldn't, they would stop. Yeah. Like, dude, Sherman was just like a psychopath. Sherman was our first atom bomb. We sent yeah. him to the South to blow it up. And he yeah. didn't care. He didn't care. He killed freed slaves. He was he was a nut. He was nuts. He was torching farms. He was just it was. I think it was 
it's not the first, but for like American history, it is the advent of scorched earth yes. policy. Yeah, and he learned it at West Point, where all the generals in the Civil War were. He was like, I'm going to show you how it's really done. <laughs> William wow, Tecumseh dude. Sherman. William Tecumseh Sherman. They named the tank after him, the Sherman That's tank. Right. That's right. Uh, for the record, Jeez. that channel is called History Marsh, uh, M-A-R-C-H-E. The Sweet. video I was looking at was called Chancellorville. Sweet. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Chancellorsville. I've never been there before. Robert E. Lee's greatest battle. Mm. Robert E. Lee apparently was just a brilliant, brilliant guy fighting for his yep. home state of Virginia. Yep. Also went to West Point. He had was like friends thing. with a yeah. lot of the other generals oh, in the union. They were like course. knew each other and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So, and they fought together in what the Mexican-American War. I yep. believe. Yeah, yeah, they're all boys. I mean, Jefferson Davis went to West Point. All of them, uh, except for Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. Lincoln was just some outsider. He was a, he was a boxer in Illinois, right? Uh, boxer, lawyer. Yeah, lawyer. yeah, crazy. Tall, lanky guy. Yep. And then uh, he was not. He, he was a, a staunch racist. Yeah. Uh, everyone was. He wanted to send all black people back to Liberia. <laughs> Is it, was it Liberia? I'm Liberia, yeah. Pretty yep. sure that's what they did, right? That's there are many Liberia stories of, of brothers fighting against each other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it was, it was so. Crazy. But but then this is the beautiful thing. I mean, West Point. They started the Association of Grads. I believe that's what it's called. After the war, to be like, all right, we all fought and killed, you know, each other. But let's get let's be brothers again. And like, so it's a it's a pretty amazing. So uh, Liberia, which is in West uh, West Africa. Started in the 19th century, between 1822 and 1861, 15,000 mm -hmm. freed and freeborn African Americans, along with 3,198 Afro Caribbeans, relocated to Liberia, gradually developing an Americo Liberian identity. Hmm. The settlers carried their culture and tradition with them. Liberia declared independence uh, July 26, 1847, which the U.S. did not recognize until 1862. But I, I believe they also had like. Um, Americanized like a uh, constitution and, and policy and things like that. I think they had like a southern culture too, where they had slaves and slave owners too, if I'm they not did. mistaken. They yeah, did. they had they adopted what the plantation what system right. in the south yeah. and then just projected right. it on to they were their like new this, homes. We like this human slavery thing that's been going on for the since the beginning of time. No, right. it's 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 really effed up because um, it was really also all they knew. It was the only economic right. system they knew. It wow. was the, you know, they were former, they were emancipated slaves. And um, the I, you know, I don't know, they they did the evil that was done onto them, onto others. Right. But, uh, but you know, you know, people yeah. need to understand too. A lot of people don't realize this. The North was super racist. Yeah. Just yes. abject racism. And you know how it's really easy to understand? Segregation continued in all of these places until the end of the 50s yeah. or right. whatever, until the Civil Rights Act, even like 60s. 60s, yeah. So exactly. this idea that these abolitionists were like, we oppose racism is like, no, they were they were very racist. Well, I'm sure the John Brown types were not segregationists, but. You know what people also don't understand too? Like people really need to read this. Uh, there were slaves that got paid. The one, of the one of the things that happens is everybody sees these movies and these stories where it's a plantation where a guy's being beaten, which happened, is horrifying, is really bad, and it was a lot of slavery. But there were also slaves who worked in homes, there were slave to, slaves who worked in shops, and there were slaves who received pay. And there were slaves who bought their own freedom with the money that they earned working as a slave. And I think it's important that people understand the nuances and the context around a lot of this, because then you'll understand how it was possible you know, like I read about Frederick Douglass and I read about these other uh, uh, other freed slaves and it's like they bought their slavery or they bought their freedom. And I'm like, wait, what? And then I'm like, oh, interesting. The system was not the movie system people think it was. It is actually much more complicated and nuanced, albeit the whole thing, in my view, completely wrong. And I think uh, everyone's kind of realized that around the world, except for maybe North Africa. I mean, it goes to show how long it takes for ideology to change. I mean, and it's going to take, you know another 50 100 years for a lot of the modern inverted racism to go away like it's really embedded it takes oh, the a democrats long time. are putting getting cpr to racism as hard as they can yeah exactly so maybe but uh time is more about motion and the ability for information to travel so with the internet speeding up yeah, yeah data yeah, yeah, yeah. transfers so quickly that mm -hmm. it can metamorphize uh ideologies rapidly that's very true for good or evil it's a matter of making but people can, comfortable and manipulating it, it, them casually, I think. Mm -hmm. We're gonna there see. are people who experience segregation still alive today. I don't know. That's yeah. It, that's yeah. wild. It's called Takes, vaccine passports. But there, uh, uh, I, I, black and white I, segregation. I, I've, uh, I've, vaccine I've, passport right. stuff was wrong, but black and, and white. I know. But I do think we may. I, I, actually, I'll say this. I, I don't know if we're tending towards an end of gender segregation. That's what the, the gender ideologues have pushed for using the same argument for uh, uh, that that was used against racial segregation. Mm. Considering, uh, you know, Shane Gill is hosting SNL this weekend, certainly think the woke are losing. So I'm not so sure that will happen. But uh, 
a bunch of the left have made the argument that gender segregation is no different than racial segregation. And there's no argument for it, especially when the 1964 Civil Rights Act forbids discrimination on the basis of sex. So there was a case in California where uh, some guy sued the like women in computing club. He's like, a university had a club for women in computing. It's not fair. I should be allowed to join. You're discriminating against me. And the courts ruled there's a club that men can join. So it's not discriminatory. If there is a club you can join, they're not they're not saying you can't be in a club. This one's just for women. That one's for men. By the way, while that's an interesting real quick that 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 argument uh, <coughs> lends itself to segregation. If there's two bathrooms and one's for white people, and one's for black people, then you're not being discriminated against. But we've already said no to that. So this case in California seems question uh, questionable, which resulted in leftists now arguing you cannot create two bathrooms for two protected categories. That is discrimination under the law. Period. And so now we're at the point where legally they're correct. Absolutely. If the 60, 1964 Civil Rights Act says you cannot discriminate on the basis of sex or race, and we've determined that bathrooms based on race are discrimination, then it follows that sex bathrooms are also are. But we also have a common sense and moral line where we're like men and women are different. Males and females are different. That's why we do this, to which the left has now countered the argument saying that used to be the position of the segregationists that black and white people were different. And so it was for safety reasons. They had different spaces. They're trying to use the exact same, same arguments. Many conservatives and libertarians have pointed out the 1964 Civil Rights Act has created the path to wokeness to create things where like dudes are going in girls bathrooms. Do you buy that it's on the same level? Um, I do think men and women's bathroom is equal to segregation, but I support that type of segregation. I don't, like, yeah, we are segregating people by gender. Right. No, no, but I not think that's gender, a good thing. But like with, or sex, you know, or, say, say it was only a, a black area at a college. I don't think we should have that. Um, I think it's okay to segregate by genders. I don't think we right, should do you think, by Do race. you think that that new modern race segregation at schools is on the same level as historic? Yes. Uh, wait, so wait, wait. Ask that one more time. Yeah, at, wait, you see, wait, what I'm saying, you know, if there was like what, what Brett Weinstein, you're saying faced, like when they do these POC only rooms, it's the same segregation. I'm saying, do you? I'm asking if you think it's the same level of segregation as it was traditionally. Oh no way, no. no. I think this it's, they, it, they it, have stupid safe spaces, but and right. it was when it was institutionalized in every facet where like you couldn't go into a certain store or whatever. That's a higher degree of segregation. Okay, occurring. so you, so you think that it's lesser. It's, not, it's a fact. You're asking a fact-based question. If, if, if there's 10, if, if there's if there's 100 universities that have within their university system one instance where they've created a black-only space, that is factually less sure. than the entirety of the country having segregation as a standard standardized uh, policy. I'm with you, Elad. I think that segregating based on sex is very different than racial segregation. We've made it a dirty word, but uh, I think Se what we're right. actually when we're actually talking about here isn't a bad thing. Um, the, go on. Uh, what can you determine about someone based on the color of their skin? Like nothing, almost nothing, ha almost, nothing. almost some genetic ancestry. Yeah, the reason, the, the, let's let's expand this though, because a lot of people are like, oh, come on. No, no, no. Like seriously, like a dude from Somalia and a dude from Haiti are different people. Yeah. They have a dark skin tone, but they're going to be very different. The Somalis are shorter than Haitians who are taller. So it, what's your determination? Skin color is not a good metric for, for any kind of segregation. You can't, you can't even really determine someone's ethnic background or what part of the world they come from based on the color of their skin. Yeah. They're like, I went to Egypt, they thought I was Egyptian. Yep. And I'm, 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 not, I'm not. I go to Spain, they thought, I, they thought I was Hispanic. I go to Mexico, they think I'm Mexican. Right. They, they can't tell. So uh, how someone looks isn't a good determ de uh, determining factor. However, males and females, globally, everywhere, period, are different. And so that I get. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.